All right, everyone. Um, yeah. Thank you for bearing with us. Can you hit that um, button on your way out? Because we had technical difficulties um, getting the the uh, the pre-town meeting going, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do we're gonna run through we're gonna do the pre-town meeting now, and then we'll move on into our regular select board meeting and um i hope we didn't cut anyone out like i hope nobody was really planning on getting on and and uh wasn't able to do that so um to to so um i'm gonna whatever i guess uh it's just after six six oh four i'm gonna call to order the um, special meeting to um, discuss the town meeting, the budget and all that. And um, so before uh, before we get into the budget, I know, so we have, I know Steve Fortman has joined us. He's come um, to, could, you came to communicate something about town meeting, correct? Or something that's on the ballot? Is it budget? Re I guess, do you want? Uh, this is related to Article 2021 uh, because we're not having an in person town meeting. And this is such an important issue. There's been no public forum for the town for the voters to discuss this issue at all. So this is the first attempt to engage my fellow voters of Hardwick to talk about a, a very important issue that's going to be on the ballot. And unfortunately, you know, right now is the time that we have to discuss it because this has been put into the agenda for town meeting, you know, during a pandemic when we don't have all the normal uh, opportunities for public discourse. So this is an immediate issue and an important issue. And the reason I'm here is to create discussion with with voters so i yeah. just want to interject that articles 2021 relate to the uh the Vermont cannabis control board and, and um help shadow voters let's say 20 and shadow voters for establishment and operation of cannabis retailers within our good and 21 is uh, improving uh integrated licenses so then correct and those are specific uh, things that I'm here to discuss tonight. Great. So if you give me the floor, I'll speak for a few minutes. And uh, maybe, let's do uh, that, uh, and then I'll we'll do budget after. If that's good. Is that good with everybody else on the board? Okay. So you you can you can look right into that camera. That's where. Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is Steve Foreman. Um, I'm here in a number of roles. I'm a parent. I'm a Hardwick voter. I have kids in the school system here. Uh, I'm also a sports coach. I have five seasons of coaching the great youth of this town. Uh, I'm a proud veteran and I'm a proud farmer and I'm a member of Hardwick Rescue Squad. So for some voters who don't know exactly what that is, we have a primarily volunteer EMS service uh, for Hardwick and the surrounding towns. I'm a member of the board of Hardwick Rescue Squad as well as a driver. Uh, I'm here specifically to discuss articles 20 and 21 that are on the, uh, the vote for a town meeting this year. And again, I would have hoped for a, like a more opportunity for community discussion of important issues, but there's no time anymore as uh, these ballots are going to be coming in within a few weeks without an opportunity to discuss them anymore. Um, and so at, that begs the question, uh, what is the rush to put this on the agenda? And why, why is this on the ballot? Uh, was there, uh, Hardwick citizens that came together and said, hey, we have a shortage of cannabis products and we need to establish a retail market. We want to bring that to our town and they bring uh, a petition uh, to do that. Um, what, what, is the, what is the rush to get this opt-in uh, voted on right now? And we're seeing this across Vermont. And the answer is uh, there's a, a very a large um, corporate lobby that's happening all across the United States with cannabis legalization. And it's driven by the folks that are looking to make money on cannabis. There's no law against that. And that is, you know, valid economic activity that's going to be legal here in Vermont. 
but it, it does beg, beg the question, how did this sail so quickly through our state legislatures, even with, without the support of our governor who did not sign the bill? How has it already worked its way onto a local ballot without town discussion? And the answer is that there's a very strong lobbying effort behind it. So it's very important for Hardwick citizens to understand that they have to, uh, they have to decide this issue. It's been pressed to them. And the reason it's been pressed so quickly is because there's folks that are ready to make money. So here we are. Um, so what I've known about my Hardwick citizens is they're always a little bit wary of corporate money and outside money. And they should trust their instincts well on this issue. For me, I have no financial interest in this issue whatsoever. I have no plans to become a retail cannabis person. I have um, really had no interest on the issue until about a year ago. As an EMS member, um, I noticed in some of the data that was being put out on legalization that there tends to be an increase in hospitalizations and use of EMS in communities that, uh, that have a higher density of retail um, cannabis available, okay? And so that got me interested in the issue because as a volunteer EMS member, I know that uh, you know, on a typical day that I'm on duty, um, I am ready to drop whatever I'm doing on my farm and go to help a, uh, a fellow citizen member that's in trouble. But I also like those calls to be as infrequent as possible because my fellow volunteers are unpaid and we're taking time out of uh, whatever else we have going on in our lives to provide the EMS service to the town. So, uh, so then I began to study the data. What did I find? There's a lot, a lot of data, a lot of studies. And these studies can be viewed in different ways. And what the lobby uh, that's interested in uh, making money from retail cannabis is going to present you with is an understated impact to the community and an overstated benefit to the community in the form of tax dollars. And again, I would urge Hardwick voters to trust your instincts and remember uh, to seek the best information, trust your instincts, and really look big picture uh, before you uh, buy into some of the information that may be presented to you. Okay, uh, and I, I am going to use the informational document uh, that was provided at Hardwick as an example. Here, community impact. Uh, we've got five or six bullets statements that really do not tell the story of what the potential impacts are uh, of opening uh, retail uh, establishments in our community. Again, uh, I'm not here to sell you on um, reefer madness and this is the end of the world if we have some shops in our town. But I can tell you that the potential community impacts based on what I looked at from communities in other states um, is not being presented in the information that voters are getting right now. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the information that I did look at because it's important to me. What did I find? Again, trust your instincts. Retail establishments is basically marketing. So if I was to open establishments in this community that sold model airplanes, you might find that there's an increased use of model or remote control airplanes in your community. It's just a basic fact, good old American marketing. The brick and mortar stores is a good way to get your product to the people. And again, this is common sense. Greater retail availability leads to greater use leads to heavier use, more frequent use of cannabis. And that is shown in studies. So what is different about what would be available from these stores and what is available now? This is not a discussion about legalization. I support legalization. Legalization is already here. My fellow Hardwick voters can grow marijuana, smoke marijuana and live free. And I support their right to do that. However, does our community want to bring high potency THC products into our community that can be packaged, for example, 
as edibles that look like candy. Uh, now, I will give you some personal insights as a Hardwick Rescue Squad member. Have I ever been impacted by edibles in the community? The answer is yes. I have gotten up in the middle of the night, gone to get the ambulance and taken it out to residences to respond to folks who have uh, taken too much THC because they purchased high potency THC products, tried to bake them into something or um, eat them in some way. That has happened. It has impacted me personally. What happens when that call is in standard? Well, the ambulance goes out there. There's typically not much we can do. These are not that dangerous calls. They're typically not fatal, but the ambulance is out of service for these calls. Uh, I mentioned uh, THC products that are packaged as candy. If you have not seen the labeling and what these actually look like, I urge you to go online and see what they are. What you, what you will see is basically looks like a candy package. Uh, gummy bears, Kit Kat bar. Have we seen this in our community? The answer is yes. Has a person in our community accidentally ingested THC, a person who had no intention, no intention of taking the drug, ingested accidentally THC because it was packaged as candy? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. It happened and it happened in our community. So increased retail availability of high potency THC products in our community, is it a good idea? I think it needs further discussion. I think it needs for further discussion. The New England Poison Control Center has the data. Have we increased accidental pediatric ingestions of THC as legalization has occurred in other New England states? The answer is yes. Are these facts presented as community impacts to the community? No, they are not. The reason is there's a very strong lobby that's very interested in understating community impacts and overstating community benefits. I'm gonna leave you with uh, a comparison here and talk about the word hypocrisy. I have a farm and I make a wonderful product, goat's milk. I am not allowed to sell my raw goat's milk to another Vermonter in a brick or mortar store because the state feels that that is too dangerous. When we see hypocrisy at this level, it can only come as a result of corporate greed and outside money. I encourage all Hardwick voters to vote no on 20 and 21, to find out their facts from good sources of information, to engage their fellow voters on this important issue and urge them to vote no. And also encourage you to reach out to me if you have any questions and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Right, thank you Thanks so much. It's, um, it's a year you, without. Did you sign it? A year without a real town meeting. So it's, you know, Steve's right that we were missing the discussion aspect. So, um, all right. So I'm going to just do a quick overview of our our budget. Um, So the budget that the select board is proposing and is asking the voters to um, approve is uh, has some changes that uh, voters may know um, uh, compared to previous years. So uh, revenues are down quite a bit, and that is uh, largely due to the 
We'll also the Greensboro police contract. So that contract provided a fair amount of revenue that offset policing services. Um, that is the largest revenue down. Um, do, we're also um, changing, we're having less money transferred from water and sewer funds uh, because uh, we have judged that the, the transfers have been really too large in the past for, for the amount of services covered. Um, overall, I move on to expenses, and overall, our expenses are going up at this 1.1%. It's just over 1% on the expenses. Um, 1.11. Uh, so we're trying to keep our expenses in check. Um, and uh, that our prop where our projection projected impact um, on property tax is It's three, it's keep scrolling. It's three, something. Like yeah, to keep go all the way to the other. Where's the cover? It's 3.1%. So we probably should have had the town report here. Do you have a answer? Yeah. All right. So um going to uh, grab the town report just now. Yeah. But the other items of note are our um, our uh, fund balance has grown to be quite large. So we're going to um, slide some of the fund balance into capital funds, uh, primarily to into the the biggest one is sliding into the um, capital road fund. Uh, and where the main driver there is um, a, the need to pay center road and the rate of the saving that is going to be way too far out. So this will help us by taking some of the money from the fund balance and moving to capital roads that will definitely help offset the um, road. Road maintenance amount, right? Two point twenty. Sorry, Uh, yeah, exactly. So the um, sorry. So the projected. Thank you so much. The projected um, total net um, increase in property tax rate is three point five one percent. Oh. Sure. Um, what else do we have? Uh, in the highway department, we, you might notice that we had an um, increase, and that's because we, we in the gravel line because we uh, are has stopped doing the back roads capital and instead just have it in our in our uh, regular budget. So the gravel has gone up twenty five. Um, in our office, uh, the, which is the town manager's office, we're at an increase primarily driven by health insurance plan changes and um, some increases in salary. Uh, we in payroll, uh, we have a deep, we've decreased the community development coordinator position to to correspond with the actual. That, it's, that that position has been using. Um, in the police department, um, we have decreased the budget, the total budget amount by um, around 155000 to try to um, offset the loss of the revenue from the Greensboro contract. Um, and why why not to talk about uh, uh, oh um, 
and also line items uh, rescue has asked for an increase, which they need to continue providing service in Hartman. And so uh, select board is, is supportive of that. that means. All right. Sorry, that's a little dry, but that's my run through. Anybody select board? Eric, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if, if you wouldn't mind, I know we've explained this in previous select board meetings, but do you mind just kind of going over the, um, the difference in the police department budget? I know you touched on not having that revenue, but can we just go back and just explain it a little bit more? So looking at the expenses side, you mean? Yeah, I know we've talked about it at other select board meetings, but. Yeah, just run through on the um, police. All right, so, oh, this one's color, police, in case he's got it up, right? Yeah, yeah. so um, we're basically forecasting a, a decrease in salaries. So we're gonna have a decrease um, I think we're projecting to have the for this year that the budget's for we we're going to have one less officer I think right this next year yeah because that we've got a decrease in our payroll I mean not less than we've had but less than we've budgeted for correct yeah um, and we've uh, to do to do. What else? So in here, I mean, there are a bunch. The so overtime is down. Um, there's a increase in part-time officers because there's going to be a little more reliance on. We're predicting more reliance on part-time officers, at least in the short term. Uh, and then associated costs, salary costs, the social security workers comp um, uh, insurances are predicted to decrease or forecast in our budget to decrease. Um, and there's some other miscellaneous stuff that's decreasing, um, but primarily we're looking at uh, a decrease in the salaries really is what's mostly driving it. And then the associated benefits. The Kaylee, is that it? So. Sorry, go ahead. No, reduction in the cop cops grant. Right, that's we a loss of revenue. We, we don't have a cops grant cops officer anymore. Right. And expenses, right. The expenses go down and the revenue, correct. Right. Kaylee, is that what you were thinking about or are you thinking about? Yeah, more? I think that was I think that was helpful. I think also um, we've talked about this before, but I think we, we designed this police budget to um, try as hard as we could to make up for that loss in revenue while also maintaining Meaning the amount of coverage that the citizens of Hardwick are used to. I just think that's worth mentioning again. Right. And the, the net result of, yeah, so that's a great point. And the net result of that is not a surprise to anybody on the board or anybody in the community who's been paying attention. I think that um, having the contract with Greensboro and sharing that cost, the cost of the police department uh, was beneficial to Hardwick financially because we were sharing the cost of running a police department across two communities instead of just one. So by not covering Greensboro and not having them in the mix, we, even though we're trying to tighten up the police budget, lower the expenses, we can't lower them as enough to come out flat um, because, um, we are trying to maintain the level of coverage that Hardwick has become accustomed to. So to do that, even at the at, at the you know the most cost effective level, it's still going to cost more than if we were sharing the PD with another town like Greensboro. So that's just that's just the way it is um, if we want to maintain the, the same coverage, basically. 
any other comments, suggestions, discussion on the budget while we're here? I guess I would also just encourage folks if people watch this um, later and you have questions, feel free to reach out to the town manager, to select board members, um, because we won't have the opportunity to discuss at town meeting. We'll just be voting Australian ballots. So if you do look this over and you have questions, please reach out. And uh, I can't see everybody in the um, Zoom, but as, assuming that nobody has joined for the information, the town meeting informational meeting. I think I'm gonna close this session and move on to our regular um, select board meeting. Yep, yeah, that works. It's 629 and I think we'll, we're safe to do that. And then I will go ahead and start the regular meeting as soon as we exit. Okay, so um, so I'm going to adjourn the special select board meeting for the going over the town meeting and um, informational meeting. So meeting adjourned. <laughs>